It's the first hospital to open in West Louisville in 150 years and just a few days away from admitting its very first patient. Today we are getting our first sneak peek at what it all has to offer. Our Ian Hardwood and photojournalist Alyssa Newton are joining us live outside the Norton West Louisville Hospital where staff just cut the ribbon on the brand new facility. Ian, what's the mood out like like there? Brooke, even with all the confetti here and most of the crowd out, it's still electric. There were a lot of people giving each other hugs whenever that ribbon was cut as the confetti went out into the air. And a lot of people saying this is a long time coming and it's about time, like you said, decades, over a century without a hospital here. You can see the big crowds here from our footage earlier. There's a lot this place is going to offer. It's giving about 400 new jobs to West Louisville, an emergency room 24 7, surgery services, x ray, and as far as the chief administrator of this hospital, Corinza Townshin, she says this is a celebration she's happy for, but she's even more excited for when the doors open on Monday. Everybody always asks, Corinza, what's next? First, let's get this place open. Um, but what's next is really good patient care and great customer service. That's what's next. And again, these doors open for the very first time on Monday, Veterans Day. We heard from an Army veteran today up on this stage who said she's honored to be a Norton patient and to be able to come here close to home and get the care that she needs. We'll have more coverage on this later from community members out in the audience who are excited to have this health care so close to home coming up at 4, 5 and 6 o'clock where we'll also be field anchoring. For now, I'm live at the Norton West Louisville Hospital. Ian Hardwick, WHAS, on your side. It will be a life changing experience for those in our West Louisville community. We are again live from that hospital today, bringing you stories from those who helped make this project happen and what it means for our future. That's coming up today right here on WHAS 11 News beginning at four o'clock. Right now, there are 66 cars in the city's impound lot because of street takeovers across Louisville and state lawmakers and city leaders are getting serious about new laws to combat them. Our Alexander Goldberg and photojournalist Elijah explain how it, this incident is fueling the latest crackdown. This street race on Bardstown Road two weeks ago, fatal and in broad daylight. They're doing it willfully. They know what they're doing. They're being dangerous. They don't care about anybody else. They do care about their car. And so I want them to watch it get crushed. Police say it was on this strip of Bardstown Road where 77 year old Myrtle Wacker was hit and killed by street racers. In a courtroom this week, the detective on the case says this man, Yusinir Pacheco Bernal, was driving at 119 miles per hour and never touched the brake. We asked the Metro Police Chief about the crash. That's egregious. Um, and somebody's life was lost in this incident. Another life was uh, horribly turned upside down. And I, I, I fully support uh, prosecuting them to the fullest extent of the law. Bernal, the driver of the white Mustang, is charged with complicity to murder. Adam Steele was driving the blue BMW. Bernal and Steele are facing wanton endangerment and racing charges. So we will push for legislation to be able to seize these cars and, and destroy them permanently. Kentucky Representative Jason Nemus of Middletown says just seizing cars isn't enough. And we're very serious about it. I think not only should we crush the car, we should make them watch it. The chief sees this as another deadly crime, among others impacting Louisville on a record level. Violent crime is our priority, uh, but keeping people safe is number one. And so whether that's uh, traffic enforcement or violent crime interruption, we're going to do both of those. One crackdown they can accomplish right away. In Louisville, Alexandra Goldberg, WHAS 11, on your side. Chief Humphrey says this type of legislation would be best crafted in the state house. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg says he supports car crushing to reduce street takeovers. We are learning an FBI investigation is ended with no charges for an LMPD officer. That's Detective Dustin Dean, who is seen shooting a TV news crew with pepper balls during the 2020 protests in downtown Louisville. Chief Paul Humphrey says Dean will not face any more disciplinary action from the department, which gave Dean a letter of reprimand. And after three years on desk duty, the chief said that's discipline enough. The pepper balls seen here are what hit that wave TV photojournalist in the neck as she was covering the protest. The chief said because of the chaos in that moment and the officer's inability to see in the bright lights of the news crew, he believes no wrongdoing occurred. 
I also factor in how Officer Dean behaved afterwards. He had the option to be a, be a bad employee, and he took the high road, took this on, accepted the fact that he was under investigation, accepted the fact that, um, that he was being investigated criminally by the FBI for civil rights violations, uh, accepted the fact that he made a mistake. Officer Dean is now back on the street as a 7th Division detective, and since this incident, LMPD said it made several changes to how it instructs officers to use force. Drivers will soon be able to drive both ways on a portion of West Oak Street, a city project to convert that road from 16th to 18th to a two-way starts today. Crews will begin resurfacing work this afternoon, keeping one lane open. This is just one of the many streets around Louisville being converted to two ways. East Jefferson Street from Brook to Baxter Avenue just made that change. The city says street conversions like this help with safety concerns and traffic flow. A new project is now underway at the Muhammad Ali International Airport to expand its security checkpoint. The airport said the expansion will add 30,000 square feet to its terminal, which will be enough space to bump up its six screening lanes to 10. The airport says this project is the largest change to the terminal in more than 35 years. It follows a record setting year for the airport with more than 4.6 million passengers. President-elect Donald Trump has made the first appointment of his second term. Trump campaign manager Susie Wiles will be his White House chief of staff. She's the first woman to ever serve in this position and played a key role on his 2016 and 2020 teams. Trump is also moving quickly to crack down on illegal immigration. Sources told ABC News one of his first orders of business is how to carry out his promise of launching the largest mass deportation in American history. The average cost of deporting one undocumented immigrant is nearly $11,000. One advocacy group claims a one-time mass deportation operation could cost $300. $15 billion. We are keeping you updated on the president-elect's plans as they unfold on WHAS11.com. That's also where you can review all the winners in the key races here in Kentucky and from Election Day.